Okay, I guess we'll get started. Hi everyone, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to learn more about the religion and theology content available on JSTOR. Uh, your attendance is truly appreciated and we hope that you find today's presentation valuable. Just first, just a, a quick introduction. I'm Sean Herman and I'm responsible for our journal's marketing at JSTOR. And joining me is Jason. <clears throat> He's a senior licensing editor at JSTOR and he helped to build the Religion and Theology collection and can assist with any questions that you may have at the end regarding the journals in the collection. Also, just a quick note, all attendees will receive a copy of today's presentation. And the presentation should only take about 20 to 25 minutes, so we'll have time at the end to address any questions you may have. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just a quick overview of what we'll cover today. First, we'll take a brief look at who we are, our mission, and our impact today. We'll provide a brief overview of archival journals on JSTOR, looking at what's available and the coverage that's associated with archival journals on JSTOR. Then we'll delve into the uh, content offered in the Religion and Theology collection, looking at the primary areas of focus, along with important and unique titles in each field. We'll also take a brief look at two related journal collections, Hebrew journals and Jewish studies, as well as a, a brief look at the religion and theology ebooks content that's also available on JSTOR. And lastly, we'll also do a brief demonstration of our classroom reading site, which helps educators quickly find religion articles on JSTOR uh, that are good candidates for classroom teaching. So a little bit about us. Uh, Ithaca is a not-for-profit organization with a mission, and that is to help the academic community use digital technologies and to do so in a way that preserves the scholarly record and advances research and teaching in ways that are sustainable. So how are we doing that? Well, we currently pursue it via three services, JSTOR, Ithaca SNR, and Portico. We'll just touch on JSTOR since that's what's most relevant here. Uh, so JSTOR is a digital library where scholars and students can access thousands of journals, books, and primary sources that support research and teaching. And in addition to providing access to this scholarly content, JSTOR digitally preserves this content so that future generations can be assured of its availability. Also, as part of our overall mission, we provide free access to all JSTOR archival journals throughout Africa, and institutions in other developing nations get access for free or at greatly reduced rates. So what's our impact today? Well, JSTOR is one of the most trusted and heavily used research and teaching platforms for academic libraries. Six million unique visitors, including students, teachers, scholars, and librarians, use JSTOR each month from nearly every country in the world. And this includes more than 9,000 institutions from more than 170 countries uh, that provide access to JSTOR, and more than 1,100 publishers contribute content. And these participating institutions include small institutions, large universities, and every type in between, uh, including more than 100 theological schools and seminaries worldwide. So next we'll just take a brief overview of archival journals on JSTOR. And today this includes more than 2,400 academic journals that span more than 60 disciplines across the humanities and social sciences and sciences and include titles in 30 languages from 57 countries. And these archival journals are curated into multidisciplinary and discipline specific collections. So each multi multidisciplinary collection is comprised of several core disciplines, such as language and literature, history, economics, and sociology. And these include all of our arts and sciences collections, which now total 14 collections, along with the life sciences and a few other collections. Discipline-specific collections are designed for institutions that need content devoted to a specific area of study. And these include the religion and theology collection that we're looking at today. Also, uh, to help ensure affordable access, 
We adjust our collection fees based on institutions' country, size, and institution type, such as higher education, government nonprofit, public library, or secondary schools. So what do you get in terms of coverage? Well, all journals on JSTOR include the full archival run. And this means access to all issues of every title goes back to volume one, issue one, including all previous and related titles, and then goes up to the moving wall, which for most journals, this is about three to five years prior to the most current issue that is published. Also, the moving wall flips each year, so this means another year of journal content gets added to collections each year. So let's take a look at the Religion and Theology collection. The collection offers more than 80 journals spanning religious traditions, historical periods, and critical approaches. The collection serves theological schools and religious studies programs, as well as supports scholarship in philosophy, literature, and other disciplines. Just a few important titles include Journal of Religion from the University of Chicago Press, Religious Studies and Church History, both from Cambridge University Press, and Modern Judaism from Oxford University Press. Fifteen journals in the collection also offer coverage dating back more than 100 years, and titles are drawn from the United States, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Germany, and beyond. And the collection also offers clusters in Christianity studies, Judaic studies, Islamic studies, Asian and African religions, American religious history, and theology. And we'll get into more detail regarding these clusters and individual titles in the coming slides. So as I mentioned, all journals have full archival coverage going back to Volume 1, Issue 1. So this means compared to other major journal aggregators, JSTOR provides greater coverage for nearly half of the titles in the collection. In addition, about 10 titles are unique to JSTOR, a few of which are noted here. So now we'll delve into more detail regarding journal clusters. Some of these clusters are broken down by the religion they cover and include a number of titles devoted exclusively to specific religions, which can be valuable for scholars of comparative religion. So the largest cluster focuses on Christianity, with approximately 30 titles. A few notable titles in this area are noted here, some with content dating back more than 100 years. And these include Catholic Historical Review, which is the only English-speaking journal under Catholic auspices that's devoted to the history of Catholicism, and Harvard Theological Review, which dates back to 1908 and is a very prominent theological journal. There's also a cluster of 10 journals exploring Judaism, including titles such as Jewish History, which is the only English language publication that's devoted exclusively to Jewish history, and Jewish Quarterly Review, which has content on JSTOR that dates back to 1888. The collection also includes about five journals covering Islam, including Journal of Quranic Studies, which includes articles in both English and Arabic, as well as one of the oldest journals in the field, Studia Islamica, with content on JSTOR that dates back to 1953. About 10 journals covering African and Asian religions are also in the collection, and these include Buddhist Christian Studies, which is the only journal on JSTOR that is explicitly devoted to Buddhism, uh, Japanese Journal of Religious Studies, which is an important journal for scholars of Asian religions, and Journal of Religion in Africa, which is one of the only journals devoted to religion in Africa. There's also a cluster of about 30 journals that focus on the general study of religion or cover all religions. Some notable titles here include Journal of Religion, which is one of the most important journals in the field and with content on JSTOR that goes back to 1893, Journal of the Academy of Religion, which is the flagship publication of the Chief Society in the Discipline, and Religious Studies, 
a leading journal with strong international perspective. And if you'd like to see the full list of titles included in the collection along with title coverage and disciplinary focus, you can simply go to aboutjstor.org where we have a page devoted to this collection. And you can see the title list tab or you can download the Excel title list as well as link to related collections. So next we'll take a look at two, we'll take a brief look at two related collections. Uh, the Jewish Studies Collection helps support teaching and research in institutions with Jewish and Judaic, and Judaic Studies programs, as well as strengthens interdisciplinary research in religion, history, language and literature, and other fields. It features about 50 journals that cover a unique range of historical and regional aspects of Jewish studies, including content dating back to 1889, and contains titles in English, German, French, Italian, Dutch, and Hebrew. And there are a number of titles with historical depth and unique significance. Titles with historical depth include Jewish Quarterly Review, with content that dates back to 1889, it is the oldest English language journal in the field of Jewish studies and Jewish historical studies, which is published by one of the oldest Jewish academic societies in Europe and dates back to 1893. There are also titles with unique importance, including Studio Rosenthaliana, which is published on, the behalf, on behalf of the library that houses one of the largest collections of Jewish and Hebraic texts in Europe. And there's also a rare archive of Jewish history and culture in Germany prior to World War II, and that is the German title that you see here. And my apologies, I will only mangle it, so I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it here. And another related co uh, collection is Hebrew Journals, which includes about 40 titles and draws from an interdisci interdisciplinary range of titles published primarily in Hebrew. And the collection is the first on JSTOR to be released in a non-Roman alphabet, creating an essential research, resource excuse me, for scholars in Hebrew, well, Hebrew um, for scholars in Hebrew worldwide. And this means that the JSTOR platform was adapted to support right to left reading, searching in Hebrew, and journal metadata in Hebrew and English when provided. And some notable titles in this collection include Cathedra, which is a Jewish studies journal valued by scholars of religion and historians studying the Holy Land. Atiquo, which is the main scholarly journal of archaeology in Israel. And Lashanenu, which is published by the Academy of Hebrew Language and is a title essential for study of advanced Hebrew. And in addition to journals, JSTOR also offers more than 35,000 ebooks that are integrated with journals on the same easy to use platform. Uh, like the JSTOR journals program, the ebook program only includes publishers of high quality and authoritative, authoritative scholarly content. Uh, we currently offer more than 1,500 ebooks in religion from university presses, including Harvard, Princeton, Yale. Catholic University of America and Georgetown, as well as publishers that specialize in theological studies such as Fortress Press, Australian Theological Forum Press, and the Society of Biblical Literature. And ebooks also offer the same user-friendly experience as journals, and they're all DRM free, which means that there are no restrictions on simultaneous use downloading, printing, or copy-paste, and the downloads are all standard, standard PDFs that never expire. And ebooks and journals are integrated and cross-searchable on JSTOR, so there's a seamless workflow for, for researchers to access important scholarship across both types of content, and they are a separate purchase from the journals, and you can purchase subject collections that include the latest titles in religion, or you can select individual titles. We also offer savings on every ebook, and additional savings are available on the subject collections. And if you're interested, 
uh, simply contact us for more information about the savings that are available at your institution. We also thought it might be helpful to do just a brief demonstration of our classroom reading site, which includes religion and theology articles. Uh, just a bit of background in terms of how this came about. So there was evidence that JSTOR content was being used by teachers as part of their classes. But how did teachers find and select this content? And how could we make it easier? And with more than 10 million documents, which ones should they be? So we started by examining article usage over the past few years, and we noticed two-week spikes in usage at single institutions for articles that looked like teaching use. Our JSTOR Labs team also spent an intensive week finding out how teachers identify this content and how JSTOR might make it easier. So it was this combination of teacher input and usage analysis that led to a collection of about 9,000 articles that appear to have been used in courses. And each article links to the full text on the main JSTOR website. And article access is available to people at participating institutions or with individual access to JSTOR. However, those without institutional or individual access, about 70% of the classroom reading articles are also available for free uh, online via our register and read program. So I'm just going to take, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the classroom reading site. And you can explore articles in two ways through the thematic list or a basic full text search. And the search feature includes options for filtering results by reading level, which is via the flesh Kincaid grade level, and length of article. So if we take a look at the quick list by theme, uh, the set themes that you see here are based on topics which are frequently represented, represented in classroom readings content. So if we look at religion, You'll see that that's further divided into religious studies, spiritual belief systems, theology. And if we just click on spiritual belief systems, you'll see that that's further divided into Christianity or Buddhism. So if we click on Christianity, you'll see that that brings up a list of articles which have been used uh, for classroom work. If I click on the search, what I can do is I can just do a search here. I'm just going to do Christian ethics. And you'll see that that initially returns about 2,000 results. But what you can do is, let's say we wanted to filter that by a reading level of 13 or higher. And we wanted to limit that to articles that were 25 pages or less. So you'll see that that automatically narrows our results to five. And you'll also see that the, uh, the article listing shows the article title, the author, the publication date, reading level, and the number of pages, along with the top semantic terms here uh, within the article. And the, uh, the order of the article listings is based on the semantic term hits based on your search query. And if I click on one of these articles, you'll see that this takes us to the JSTOR website. And it takes us to the full page scan for that, for that article, which is part of sociology and religion. And you can just page through the different full page scans for that article, as well as download the PDF, cite it, and also there's more journal info about the journal that that article comes from. So that's just a brief um, demonstration of classroom readings. That pretty much wraps up our presentation. If you do, if you go to aboutjstore.org, you can also learn more about JSTOR and what's available in terms of archival journal collections, ebooks, and primary sources. And if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, just email me, and I'd be glad to help. Or you can also email us at participation at jstore.org if you have a general inquiry about the Religion and Theology Collection, or if you'd like to request a quote. And now we'll be glad to answer any questions, if you have them.
guess there's no questions. Well, again, thank you so much for attending, and we hope that you found this information hopeful, and you'll all be receiving a copy of today's presentation. Thanks so much.